Today's sponsor of the Vision Quest podcast is 920 Hat Company. Leather patch hats are in, and 920 Hat Company is here to hook you up with your very own custom hat. All patches are lasered on top grade genuine leather and on popular brand hats like Richardson and FlexFit. Whether you're looking to show off your business or want a one-of-a-kind hat for yourself, 920 Hat Company can do it all. All the hats are handcrafted right in the Fox Valley, but worn across America. With over 500 hats in stock, they guarantee fast turnaround times. Honestly, Liam, you know, looking at these hats, solid, right? Yeah, they're pretty, I like them. I like that patch, that patch itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of a kind stuff. Uh, I know his name is Trevor. Uh, he does great work. He's actually gotten what? I think we got some a knit hat coming. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got that coming. So uh, we're really excited to have these guys on board as a sponsor. So uh, get uh, get down to check them out on Facebook. I believe they're on Instagram. Uh, check them out, man. They got the best hats, I think, in the Fox Valley, if not in the state. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, get down to 920 Hat Company on social media and check them out. Okay. Oh, man, it's been, it's been a full weekend for me so far, and it's not even the weekend. This is, the, this is, got, this is guest number three. We got Mr. Maja Casey, head coach at Victory Wrestling Club, correct? Victory? Greco, yep, head Greco coach. Head Greco coach. So you don't you're not dealing with anything with folk style? Come on now. Uh, <laughs> uh, more Olympic style. <laughs> right on, right on. Okay. Well, if anybody who doesn't know Maja, Maja Casey's been around for a while. He's been doing some stuff, man. He's he's a coach. He's he's the real deal. I'm impre- I didn't realize you were just focusing on international styles, Maja. I apologize. I thought you were doing it all. I thought you were doing freestyle, folk style, everything, blah 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 blah. But well, you- I do I do it all, but you know. <laughs> so a my lot favorite, of favorite, my I'll- favorite international stuff a lot of people know about you in the state i mean if they don't by now they're they're probably new at this point i would i would assume because you guys you and my are everywhere you guys have been state coaches i mean plus you guys are from wisconsin correct yep okay where so where did your beginnings of wrestling start where did you where did you get this love for the sport when did it start uh well i uh grew up in uh plum city um, small town, Ooh, small town, Plum yeah. city, Elmwood would have been our, uh, Elmwood, Plum city would have been a high school wrestling team. Okay. So we had to co-op with another, uh, another school, another town. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of it's, that, uh, man. located up by, uh, it, I'd say midway between, uh, river falls and Menominee. Oh, right out there. Right by smack dab in the middle. Probably. Yeah. You kind of, is that kind of where Lucas is? Is that the Lucas? Is that stealth area? Up no, there? Lucas is south. No, Lucas is solid. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I don't. I don't turn the state upside down. I'm probably reading it that way. So, where? What, how old were you when you started? Uh jeez. I think I. I think I was fifth grade. Okay. I think that's uh That's when we tried it, and uh, kind of, you know, I was the youngest uh, three brothers, and watching them wrestle, and yeah. I guess uh, following along. Um, you're the youngest. I'm the youngest. Oh yep. man, man, how is so? So I got my, I got my, you know. You could, you could say punch ass. on one side, punch on the other <laughs> side, made me tougher, you know. Yeah. Yeah, heck yeah, you know. Oh, 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 and then <laughs> yeah, all this like, time to toughen up. <laughs> right on. So when you, when you, obviously you were in folk style, we were just talking about how you were an international, you know, you do more than international styles now. But when you started out, it was obviously folk style. Did yeah. It, when was your, I guess, most memorable moment for folk style? Obviously, there's got to be something. Dude, did you do great in middle school and even better in high school? Like, how how was how was the progression for you? I I'd, I'd have to say I, I I don't know. I guess I did have uh, some natural talent, so I was yeah. always at state. And, yeah. Um. Obviously, placing. Um. Mm-hmm. I won undefeated national or uh state championship my senior year nice maybe, maybe uh talk it know, up dude i had brian i had brian slater four-time state champ brian slater in my bracket like every year yeah so um kind of a you know uh tough one to go through yeah you know? it sounds like it um i we met up in the state semis i know my sophomore year yeah. and i thought that was a close match i had uh actually a broken hand when i wrestled him so i didn't have like had some luck uh un unlucky times i guess sure broken hand uh 
sophomore year, cracked ribs my junior year, oh. and senior year I was healthy. So, so you had to tough some stuff out. You had to you had to work through some adversities just to kind of just to make a little bit of progress. You had to you know ribs well, are, ribs yeah, are no joke, yeah. man. Ribs are no joke, and especially like getting you know uh, somebody riding on top or just pressure on top uh, yeah. is rough. Um, you know, I I uh, my brother, my older brother was at one hundred and three, so like. Uh, yeah. I was weighing like 97 pounds my freshman year, wrestling 112. So those those guys could cut down what? to 115, oh. and you know, cutting from one who, knew, who knows where they were cutting from to get down to 115. Yeah. And I was weighing 97, and Maya was wrestling 103. So oh. freshman year, um, were all three of you in, in school of, at the same uh, time? Get, look, yeah, it was a good time. It was a it was a uh, learning learning experience, I guess. You yeah. Know? Well, I did. I did good at you know later on in the year after high school was done because then it, uh, you know went down to every weight and you know cadets and stuff like that where I could have my own uh, age group and and go to the any weight I wanted to. Sure. You know, on a high school team, obviously you got these weights, and if you're not that weight, you got to find another one or uh, you know yeah. you're sitting the bench. Did you swap sometimes JD, with your brother? Did you guys swap weights some weeks? Like, hey, I'm um, gonna wrestle this guy, or no? You know, when I can think of it, uh, I, possibly, Yeah. you know, uh, there wasn't very many times that I wrestled, uh, you know, that weight. So, um, I wrestled like 112 freshman, sophomore, junior year, Holy cow. Uh, senior year. You're a little 19. guy. Yeah. You're small. <laughs> Still a little guy. <laughs> oh, come on. Little he guy, is. a lot of energy, man. A lot of energy. Well, I mean, he's not, he's not yeah, small. He what do you, what do you now? What? 130? 125? That's small. That's not small. Yeah. That's the Come smallest on, weight class in college. No, I'm about 150. I'm about 150. Okay, there we go. Right. See that's what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's, prob- that's probably the weight classes that I would be if I was wrestling. Yeah. Sure, sure. Maybe. So let's put it in perspective, though. What year did you graduate? I graduated uh, 1997. Ooh, same as me. Huh? Huh? But I quit my, my sophomore year because I wanted to focus on soccer. So oh, you're junior. Well, it was the end of my sophomore year. It was like, yeah, so my junior year. But I was my after my sophomore year, I was like, I'm terrible. I'm done. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play soccer. What high school? Oshkosh North. We had Steve England. Okay. Yeah, he was he was the man back then. We had we had uh, um, Mr. Aiken. Bill Aiken was our chemistry teacher at school, and then he was at. I think I was my freshman year, and then Bill came. And it was my second year, or Steve came. And it was my second year, and I was like, nope, I'm done. I'm good. This guy is too, way too serious. <laughs> Bill, I remember Mr. Aiken was a nice guy. He was still a good coach. I mean, he he coached quite a, guy, a few guys that made it to state, but it just wasn't the same. England came in and just changed the game, and I was like, nope, I'll work like this for soccer, not with guys that are going to pound the crap out of me every day. It was not fun. So 97. So, yeah, you're talking, I think I got the, I think the last, yeah, it was my sophomore year. I got caught bringing a six-pack of beer to a tournament. That was pretty cool. Mr. England, Mr. England found out about that. He's like, uh Hey, uh, what's uh, what'd you bring for lunch today in mean, your cooler? I was like, nothing. You know, I just I tra- traveled light today. I can fit a six pack of beer or soda in there. <laughs> he guys, I opened it. He was like, "Is uh, is that beer?" Uh, yeah, it's beer. <laughs> <laughs> to the tournament. That's how smart I was. That's how. Classic. That's how into it I was. That's how dedicated I was. So you're obviously good wrestler, and so folk style seemed to be your thing. But not so no. much. When did that change? When were you exposed to the international styles? Uh, I'd probably, probably say like sixth grade, maybe. Maybe then the following year. Okay. Um, I don't remember it being around we, that uh, much. Actually, we used to have a qualifier. So, like, now nowadays you, we don't have a freestyle Greco qualifier we did back in the day. Yeah. Um, I remember my, uh, my two brothers, they both qualified for freestyle state. Yeah. So, like. Freestyle State was in Rapids at the time. Okay. Um, Powerhouse then. And uh, so uh, I remember they qualified, and I was kind of pissed, you know. Yeah. I had to go down and watch. Yeah, so that, that kind of maybe little, helped. Yeah. Maybe helped, you know. Yeah, put a little fire and, uh, in you about um, those so, two. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. You know, um, I didn't make it. And, uh, um, you know, the following year, um, took off, flew. You know, um, I remember, uh, geez, I don't even, I'm trying to think of 
all these years. They're they're so long ago. It's but hard. um it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh you know, I, I know I wanna say eighth grade, seventh grade we went to Northern Plains. Okay. Um yep. um I was a runner up at Northern Plains one one of them years and we, we sat and we came for freestyle and uh this was down in Springfield Springfield, Illinois. Yeah. So uh came and, and Greco was out there wrestling. Yeah. And we're like, what the heck is this stuff? You know, kind of right. you're getting there to weigh in. Yeah. You're getting there to weigh in. You're wondering what the heck is, what's, what the heck is this? Yeah. Checked it out a little bit and it kind of was like, well, maybe we'll try that next year too. So, okay. um, I, I don't know. I guess the, the, the freestyle and the Greco. Yeah. Um, those are the styles I like. They're more fast flowing. Sure. Um, scoring. You, you know, I mean, catch up quick. I'm, I, I'm not. I don't have to hold someone down. And I don't have to get up. You know, if he don't turn me, then I'm going to earn myself the that, way up. There's um, that. Yeah. Or get busy on top. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so you're kind of. I mean, it sounds like middle school right away. You were hooked on it. Did you have? Once you got into high school, I mean, were you at any time? Were you trying to? <clears throat> maybe say, Hey, I want to do more just this stuff instead of the high school wrestling. I want to, I really want to do this. You know how we're kind of, you know, like stealth yeah, and you guys are you trying know, to do now specialize a little bit. Did you have that in your brain then? You know, funny you say that, but we didn't have any, all of the opportunities that we got these days. Sure. There was like one club in the state and that would have been Jim Schmitz and ringers. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, my mom would bring me down there like once a month or something at Marquette University. Oh, Jimmy's been around for a know, while. We'd, yeah, we'd be doing, we'd be doing uh, you know, um, I mean, there was so there's one club, and Milwaukee would have been for us. You know, geez, oh. I'm gonna drive at least four and a half. I was hours, gonna say, <laughs> you know, I mean, that was at least I, 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 hard to say. You know, yeah. Um, you guys probably a hop skip and a jump an, an hour or something hour, I, hour I, and I guess half. i don't know yeah i'd take him okay and take him down for like wisconsin red practices and stuff that were going on in menominee falls it was about an hour and a half oh, oh okay but yeah so so with with that being said once you actually started to maybe really dive into the international styles and, and you know getting into high school talking about fargo you know all that stuff you, you know obviously you kind of took your trips to Nor- northern plains when you got to yeah well i don't know if i lost to ever lost a match in wisconsin and greco i don't know if i ever lost a kid are you serious no. wow yep actually I did. actually i did uh last match probably oh. josh hobbeck really josh hobbeck that josh sounds hobbeck. like that yep. sounds like every like um, good wrestler like dan gable lost that one match my last ever college match yeah Spencer Lee, my last ever high, high school, school match. match. Actually, actually, that was at that was at Central Juniors. Um, it was a oh. um, junior tournament. Um, before you know, getting ready before Fargo and stuff like that. Yeah, that would have been uh, the finals. That would have been finals in Central Juniors that year. Man. So, it's so uh, how did how did that how did that set you up then going into that year at Fargo, having that loss? Did that kill you a little bit, or you know how well, sometimes guys will get destroyed by that stuff? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, there was lots of stuff going, Yeah, you know, um, from the years past, you know, my freshman year, um, yeah. I had beat the national champ a couple of weeks before Fargo. I lost him in the semis yeah. six, five, and then he wins the, the finals. Um, I took fourth my freshman year, uh, sophomore year. I, uh, made it all the way to the finals. Um, yeah. I had my uh my rival David Stoltz from Illinois. Okay, he had been my rival. Yeah. Um, pro- I'm trying to think. Uh, if I wrestled somebody three times, I'm gonna more than likely I'm gonna beat them two out of three times or yeah. three out of three times. They're very rare that I'm gonna lose two out of three times to somebody. Yeah. Um, I guess that's a good for everybody. You know, yeah. I'm gonna always shoot for. Hey, you got me once. Well, here we go. That's all you're getting. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. You know. Um. So like uh, this, David Stoltz was uh, was an absolute. Um, most of the time, I was beating him. And come come, maybe a minute left, and uh, he'd make his comeback, or I'd collapse, or something like that. So it was a yeah world team trial finals. Um, oh man, match finals, uh, world team trials, and yeah. national finals, and I mean that was the kid that was. Those are always standing in my way, I guess. Yeah, um, right on. 
So, so when you, when you got into like how, what was your first Fargo experience? When did you, did you make Fargo your first, your freshman year? So, um, we didn't, we were not in Fargo. We were down in Springfield, uh, Columbia, Missouri, Columbia, oh. Missouri would have been uh cadet nationals back in the day. Okay. Okay. During our day. Um, I, I'm unsure when it moved. Um, my sophomore yeah, year cadet national was in Nebraska. Mm-hmm. So, um, it was in, it was in Columbia, Missouri for quite some time. Okay. And then it moved all the way. Cadets and juniors were two different places. Mm-hmm. So, um, Fargo for juniors has been there for a long time. Long time. Yeah. So it's kind of like the placement of like the, the schoolboy duels and stuff like that. And all the, the junior duels and all like all that fun stuff. Cool. So when you get to Fargo, you know, when, when you finally get there, what was your first experience? Was, uh, was it just Greco or did you do both? Did you do both freestyle and Greco on your first go around? Um, well, there would have been, I did both styles my freshman year. Okay. And then, then, uh, actually, actually junior and senior year, um, I had cracked ribs, uh, junior year. Oh, so I yeah. defaulted out of the high school tournament. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, I didn't even, didn't even go to junior nationals. I was actually, um, I want to say me and Stoltz were ranked fourth and fifth moving up into juniors that year. Yeah. And then, um, not wrestling my, um, my junior year, we were still kind of projected ninth and, or I was ninth. I want to say my senior year for, uh, ratings, but I didn't, uh, didn't go to the senior year either. So like just freshman, sophomore, yeah. kind of, uh, um, mom and dad having some troubles, a lot of things going on. I was one of them kids that what, what could have happened my first two years. I'm in, uh, yeah. you know, national semifinals and national finals, um, both, both the years, you know, in the semis and once in the finals. Yeah. I couldn't imagine where I would have been my, my junior or senior year. I don't know. Yeah. You know, see, yeah. you never knew. Now I give back. Now I just give back. Yeah. It, it, honestly, I can't think of more of a, uh, how you again, your energy, man. Like your coaching seems to be like, it's just a natural thing for you as far as how you approach kids, how you coach them, and and plus your philosophy. I mean, that's another thing we can talk about a little bit more later on as we go on. But your philosophy in the room, you know, when so when you started kind of getting to the, I don't know, the edge where you're kind of like, well, I don't know if I want to compete, but, uh, you know, I really would like to coach. When did you think that you might actually would like to coach? When did that start to pop up for you? Oh, wow. Was it always? Were you always kind of helping, like at a club or something well, like that? Well, I'm trying to think. Uh, maybe when my nephews were growing, starting to grow up, uh, my yeah. older brothers had some kids, and mm-hmm. and I'm like, eh, eh, let's kind of get back in the game here a little bit. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I mean, probably since I was a dad, because then I kind of yeah, kind of took them, held my own kids down, and had them, you know, find the way out, <laughs> squeeze their way out, and they're whining and crying. And it's like. <laughs> find a way you know find yeah. a way yeah that's right that's right so what was the what was your first coaching experience and where did you first coach at um well i i coached spring valley uh spring valley elementary okay. or youth spring valley youth yeah. and then i actually uh i coached a, a year at um um boysville okay and then i then i've been coaching um spring valley um since my kids you know i was one of the you know if i was gonna coach in uh boysville i might as well coach at the home yeah the home school so um yeah that's where i took over um coach an assistant coach for spring valley and okay we had some awesome years you know we had uh some uh four years at team state um nice. we, we're, we were runner-ups a couple of years at team state we won a team state title All right. um you know, there was the, there were some good years in the in the in the teens, two thousand teens. Yeah. Um, you know, so I've been she's we've been I've been at it for <laughs> I've been at it. You've been at it, man. Battling trying to teach these kids as much as I know, I guess. Grinding. You know? Well and it's a grind studying. It's it, it, yeah. Well, I can only imagine you gotta keep up with the game. I mean, especially with the international game. Well, 
Well, you know, we didn't have like YouTube and stuff yeah. back in the day to look at. Exactly. So like now, sh- shit, you can look at whatever you want and check it out and learn. Maybe it's not going to show you everything, but yeah. then you got to start making your own little tweaks to it and figure it out. And you're like, ah, oh, this, this, this is, this is the way we do it. Yeah. My, my figure YouTube was, out. was a, was an attic getting thrown around by my brother. You know, it didn't matter where, what time it was, it would be middle of summer. He was cutting weight or whatever. He's out. He's got a rubber suit on doing fireman's carries with me. And I was like, I don't even want to be here. <laughs> just want to, I want to get on a soccer field and try to get my butt kicked. <laughs> what was your size? Hey, what was your size in high school? I was in the one forties, the one fifties. I remember that. Okay. I can't remember what they, what's what uh, coach England would put me in at, but I never had to cut. I knew I wasn't one of those guys that was out in the, out in the hallway spitting or trying to run and, and make weight. So Brad, your little man is freaking bigger than you. Huh? He is bigger than you me. Were. Yeah. Bigger than you were in high school. In high school. That's yeah. cool. That's it cool. Took a lot of, a lot of cookouts and a lot of beer drinking and stuff like that to get me all the way up to two forty. Just hanging out and doing nothing. But, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's light years ahead of me. That's, uh, the game that these yeah, kids have sure. now, and just thinking about like what you were talking about, what we had as kids for wrestling. I mean, it was single leg, double leg, half Nelson cradle. That's what I remember. I mean, you know, there are so many different there are so many different ways of of doing things, and it seemed like we always just tried to pin them. Where nowadays, yeah, kind of you're tilting the heck out of them, and, yeah. and getting a, a cushion and getting a cushion, oh. and then maybe finishing it out. Right. I think I think it's still the same as what you said. You just take. You put in the tilt, you take out the half, you put in a little bit more of, yeah. like, the lower parts of the legs for attacks. Mm-hmm. You guys probably did go-behinds still. Not no? a lot. Not, I, mean, right. I don't remember go-behinds. I mean, I remember I remember doing the spin drill. All right. Well, <laughs> then you put in go-behinds, and then really all that's different is scrambling. God, it, like you said, there's variations. So you know? Like, like, like it, it's evolved so much. It's, it, it's totally evolved. Correct. Like, uh, I'll have to say, like, uh, there, if Liam, if I have to say, there was there uh, funk. Yeah, there was funk, but not but like it how wasn't anywhere yeah. like funk is now. Yeah. No, yeah. not at all. You just got you, back then. You just got caught in a weird situation. That's what it was called. He got caught in a weird spot, and he just wound up scoring two points. And it's like, well, now they call now, it something. And now people just spend times, spend times figuring stuff out. What do I do in this situation? Let's 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 roll. That's right. You know? That's right. So so with the international styles here, you you, know, you did you did well as far as you know, you loved it. it. It's something that grabbed you. When you came back to it, when it's, you know coming into the coaching and stuff like that, what? Because you you know obviously you're coaching high school. It's not like you were out of folk style. Did, but were you kind of itching, like, man, I really want to, I, w- I really want to go back to these international styles. How do I get back into it? Or were you still kind of, because you were in the, you were in the state coaching, you know, realm, you, you know, know, as far Cleaver as Wisconsin. Asked, Cleaver asked us, um, asked me and my brother one time um, if we were one of the coach in Fargo, mm-hmm. and uh, she's that was way back in the day, and uh, yeah. I said sure, and geez, I've I've been co- I've coached uh, the Goodwill Duels a couple oh, different okay. times, yeah, school schoolboy duels, um, I mean. Teen Scani, we oh, um, that's right. You guys were in the beach that. a couple different years. Yep, and that was fun recruiting the kids. That was that was fun. That's um, always a blast. You know, that was that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it was fun making my team, and we actually were top twelve one year. Um, yeah, which was which was awesome. Um, did that's, uh, did Cleaver have hair when he asked you this? <laughs> Like, can I get a picture? <laughs> I, I have to say, cause, can I get a picture? I have to say, uh, he used to wear, because he was my coach back in the day, him and Lurky wow. and Arnie. Lurky. They were all my coaches back in the day. Wow. Um, so, uh, you know, getting to coach with him now is freaking awesome. And back yeah. in the day, Cleve used to wear a cowboy hat, oh, big cowboy hat. Get out of here. Oh. Seriously, you knew where he was. So, wait, did he have hair? Or was, was he, it under there? Yeah. Or was it just, or was he always to cover just his bald head? Jeez, I want to say Cleve's always been hiding that hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. So, so you get you get into these coaching. I used groups. to go. I used to go uh, over when he was in Wausau. I used to uh, train with him a couple weeks before uh, with Cleaver um, yeah. nationals and stuff. So yeah, yeah I used kangaroo to, um, Cleaver. Used to, 
I, I mean, he was an important figure growing up for me. You know, yeah. uh, I didn't have like the coaches or anything like right. that. It was, it was kind of my mom and uh, my mom gave us opportunities, me and my brother opportunities. And, uh, we'd, we'd fly with them. So, nice. um, that's you know, cool. So um, when, we, so you get into like international coaching or, well, not international coaching, styles. but yeah, international styles coaching. When did you decide I want to go overseas, and I want to? So bring when guys. I was a, when I was a um, when I was a kid, when I was a sophomore, yeah, um, I went overseas um, to Finland and wrestled wrestled in the Vermaki Cup. Um, so I was 15 years old. I qualified at Central Juniors for the junior tournament. So I was actually okay. like. 15 qualified for the juniors which are 17 and 18 year olds wow. all right i'm going to freaking hell yeah i'm going to we'll go to finland and uh um fritz lurkey and Vern zellner were my uh coaches um in that yeah. uh um Vern zellner was from new jersey um and then fritz was everybody probably knows you know fritz is yeah De- deforest right fritz Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. He's from no, the no, forest. Not, not, not the forest. I, I don't think. T- I can't remember DC where Evers. he's from. Yes. DC, DC Evers. Evers. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. DC Evers. Yeah. So, so when so you get Fritz over there, 15, 15 years old, man. Fred Lurkey. Yeah. Nice. So like, and then, uh, one year, 2016, um, Jared Lewis asked if I wanted to coach with Brad Owens. Um, so we had a group of 20. Sure. Um, we took him over and we went to uh, Moscow and we went to, um, went to Estonia and, yeah. and, uh, I kind of, um, Grayson Clark and my son, Caleb, um, they were, they were the little guys. They were the little oh, guys. Yeah. G train. Like 12, like, like 12 years old. So most of the other guys were cadets or uh, above. Um, so they actually um, had, we had like two different practices. Yeah. Um, so I'd take the little guys, um, you know, during our practice times. Yep. Um, and uh, I met this coach and the very next year, he kind of said he wanted to come train in the United States. He uh, gave me a holler and yeah. uh, we made it happen. Nice. And then kind of, he hosted me when I go over there and, um, Chris Charm, you know, right? so I was like, Yep. Yeah. Christian. So it would be like, uh, you know, 2017, 18 and 19. Um, we all, we went back and forth three times. Um, he nice. came over here three times. I went over there three times and then, uh, COVID hit. And yeah. then, so the last, the last two years, um, have, uh, actually been canceled. And then, uh, Liam went over with me last year, yep. um, to kind of jump started again after a two year delay. Yeah. Um, so, um, I'm looking to go back over, uh, Mm -hmm. this March. Um, and, uh, and he's looking to come back, um, sometime in the fall next, next fall. We're going to touch, we're going to touch on that in a second, but you're talking about when you went overseas as a kid, how many times did you go? I only went once. Okay. Okay. Obviously not the mark. I ended up taking fourth. Yeah. (laughs) Same here. Same with Liam. Well, he took took third. third, whatever. Yes, because so so it obviously grabbed you. You know, you liked it. It was something that because look what you're doing now with the the club that that you have. It's, and, it's, it's so it, it's so different. Like, um, if I can just say, yeah, like if this is the way I maybe this maybe I would describe it. I guess. Yeah. Every everything in the United States is wrestled the same. Yeah. Okay, so we we grew up knowing folk style. Yep. We grew up knowing folk style. And all these other countries only know other the other they don't know folk style they only know these other styles. Yep. So getting a chance to wrestle other countries, kind of a thrill. Yeah. You know, kind oh, of yeah. uh, actually, uh, and and you learn so much on their techniques because they don't wrestle the same style we do. So, um, you know, it, it, it's it, it's just we don't, we don't focus on all that in the United States. Like, right. you know, if you wrestle freestyle and Greco, I'm telling you, if you wrestle it, you're going to be probably one of the the best uh, folk stylers there is because you're getting all this extra 
technique and, and, and totally. um, you're learning how to mo- shift your body, move your body, uh, use your hips. Uh, just there's so many different ways of, of doing it that kind of translate back to folk style. Yeah. Um, but like those other kids from other countries, they've never had to hold down a guy. Yeah. They've never had to escape. Um, um, so some of those skills, you know, aren't, aren't as much needed sure. you know for all of that um and then like overseas you know the the number one style is is greco so they don't even grab a leg but they know all but they know all sorts of technique from the waist up you know so they're yeah. they're so much more advanced than we are because they don't grab a leg they don't they don't, they don't rely get on that. it yeah so they, they rely on everything right. upper body so with, with that being said when when you start to coach over here and then let's say you take your first coaching trip overseas were you kind of way awakened i said i actually do they have a freestyle greco do they have a freestyle season and a greco season over there how does that work for those guys um you know it's crazy it, uh, to be honest with you i don't know 100 percent on how it all goes sure because if you're in if you're in Eastern Europe, yep. you're probably wrestling um, Greco most of the time. Okay, okay. Um, and you'll wrestle freestyle sometimes. Sure, sure. You know, because I remember um, you guys said when you went over there that you, they were just literally starting to get into freestyle for that part of the season or whatever, and they had so much focused on Greco. So everybody's kind of, I think you mentioned even at the tournament that you might see these guys not do so good, our, not our guys, but their guys, not do so good in freestyle because they're just getting back into that kind of that kind of groove. Well, well, the thing is, too, like, they do have their own freestylers and they do have their own Greco. Okay, okay. Um, but, like, East, more, more Western Europe, you'll get into more folk style. I mean, not folk style, you'll get into more... F- freestyle and stuff sure um you know it all depends on where you're at in the world i guess uh which is uh ruling the roost um yeah but so i know uh we don't we don't rule the roost in greco i know that no it's and that's a so i do i do actually have a thing with that i do with lucas delt and we're gonna try and do it every week but we're gonna spread it out a little bit i think we're actually doing it this coming sunday it's called parterre I call parterre with Lucas Stelt. So that way I can keep people in the groove a little bit about what's going on with Greco. Like I had no idea, and we're going to talk about it with Lucas, but I had no idea that there was no Greco coach with some of this uh, world championships that came up in the past like year. They had nobody to go with them. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like this, that's ridiculous. <laughs> how is this possible? You know, but obviously we know how it is in this country. You know, everything has been so geared towards folk style because we're comfortable. You know, not everybody wants to step out of their comfort zone and try and get better at something. They kind of get into a groove. So being that, that groove, and kind of leading back into what I was saying before, as you're getting into your international style coaching and you take your first trip over there, were you kind of, because I even heard about a little bit when you guys were over there this last time, a little bit of a smack in the face and what you're teaching these kids uh, over here as far as compared to what... You remember that? He was sitting there and... (laughs) Oh, what was it? But Christian goes, uh, no, shit. no, no feet or something like no, that. No, it was something no like step, that. No step, no big steps. Oh, yeah, step. no big step. When we were doing that reverse lift, I forgot who was doing it, but Christian, all of a sudden, I don't even think he was mad, but it sounded like he was. He goes, why are we stepping so big? Why are we going outside and stepping? And Maja was just sitting there recording, and he just. Okay, I'm just, listening. I'm yeah, listening. He just, it was like when Dan Gable talked about Terry Brands at the NCAA, just bug eyes, just, what are we, what's what's wrong, what? Okay, what, do, what's, yeah, what are we doing? What wrong? do we do? <laughs> so did you find that, no, I mean, so even funny. in the beginning? Like, that is, it, it's so funny. Like, their, their, their techniques are uh, small and precise. And, sure. Uh, they're, they're uh, I mean, um it, you got to pay attention to detail and they ain't going to tell you, t- tell you detail unless you kind of are in on the end with the coaches and things right. like that. They'll explain, you know, their little, little tiny details. Yeah. You can watch it, but why are you doing it this way? And why are you doing it that way? And why you're stepping here and instead yep. of here, yeah, they're kind of like, Oh, pretty nice. I, I mean, I'm, I'm loving, loving the, uh, international stuff. Uh, uh, most of my guys at Victory, um, you know, we're learning. We're we're learning 
European style stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, true. And true. You know, European. I had um, I only sent like six or seven guys last year and I had uh, four all Americans and five, one more that was in the top 12. So, uh, nice. you know, my guys did really well out the, at, at Fargo this year. And, yeah. and it's kind of uh concentrating on uh small things little things winning the little things and yeah. uh, something that you don't see in the, in the united states um so much yeah no i totally agree that i'm bringing back yeah totally that agree. i'm bringing back so in, in the, and it's invaluable in, as far as like what what you've been doing and like as you said liam went with you the last time uh he, he won't be able to go this year but i know that with christian and those guys coming back It'd be nice to have him going out there to reconnect with some of those guys, you know, and, and have oh, him. Oh, you'll have, yeah, you'll have to come up. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Who's cause... coming with him? Who's coming with Christian? Um, I would assume most. You're gonna remember most of the guys, I would yeah. assume, because uh, usually, usually he brings uh, anywhere from, you know, five to ten. Five to ten different guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. It, now with that connection you have over there, and, and obviously you guys have been, it's not like two years. It's been like three, four, five, six, you know, six, seven trips or whatever, plus them coming back here. With that relationship that you've built, have you seen that trust kind of grow throughout their kind of community of wrestling with you guys coming over? Because, you know, the, there's a lot of stuff going on over there where they may not like us. You know what I'm saying? They may not trust everything that we're doing, but having the relationship now that you guys have built, do they start to see like, hey, we we could learn this from these guys. Let's they they do this better than we do. Do you see them trying to maybe pick your brain a little bit about stuff, or they're like, we For got sure it. Sure, they do. It. Like uh, I'll uh, I'll go over there and I'll go to because uh, Inglas is the club and yeah. um, they have uh, MMA and um, oh. uh, Christian Christian will have me um, Oit. Oh, it would be um, the MMA guy. Okay. I will do a practice. I'll do a practice with him, and maybe I'll teach um, some of leg attacks or some of our folk style techniques. Gotcha. Oh, which is really cool. You know, yeah. um, I mean, I've been over there, and every single time I'm put to, I'm put to work when I go over there. You know, I'm learning. I'm actually yeah. get a chance to uh, teach. Um, so, like, uh, Liam got to spend um, a couple days. Uh, with an Estonian family mm -hmm. and, um, and I got to see, I got to see Liam at nighttime. We'll, we'll see him at nighttime. We'll be training. Um, but, um, during the time I, I was away with my coach, um, yeah. I was actually coach. I actually got coached two different youth groups and things like that That's at cool. two different, uh, schools. And <laughs> man, wow. it's like, I'm having so much fun um, doing other things while they get to spend a couple days uh, with the Estonian family and, and yeah. do this and that. And um, so, I mean, uh, so we're going to sell this trip it's, right it's, now. It, it, it's so valuable time. Right. Like, it blows my mind on some of the things that I'm, I get to do over there. Uh, it's awesome. So we're, we're going to sell this trip right now. So you, you guys go, every, I mean, obviously, like you said, COVID, you had to take off. So this is an Estonian trip for people who don't know. You may have heard of Jared Lewis and the things that he, you know, he's gone to Estonia and other places and, and whatever. Maja has made it a point to where this is because it's the largest tournament that they have in, in the Eastern Bloc or in Europe. Europe. In Europe. In Europe. So it's the largest, is it youth and high school, correct? It's it's youth and high school kids? Yep. Yep. Okay. So it's the largest one in Europe. You can't, Like, it doesn't get bigger than this one. But you guys make it a point. It's not just a trip you guys take. It's a, it's an experience. So, like he just said, well, you, you're, you're not just taking them to wrestling camps and wrestling. Like, these kids are getting the life experience of what it's like to be there. For sure. So, Liam, what do you think? I had... This is just my personal experience. Yeah. I had a Big Mac BLT at McDonald's. Oh, boy. Here we go. Um, yeah. But it's... Food. <clears throat> a, of course, we're going to talk to a wrestler during wrestling season and yeah. bring up the Big Macs. And well, all we're about to get pounders. a two-pound allowance. Okay. Well, but, you are about okay, to ask. With the, with the experience, it was very enlightening on what people, besides us, what they do. Yeah. And it was very different. Their cultures... It's not different, but it's a lot more laid back almost. Did you did you feel like you left? It was interesting, it? wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Did you feel like you left the comforts of the U.S. when you were in Estonia necessarily? No, not really. I mean, it's different. It's yeah. just, I mean, you could go to L.A. and still be it's different. But it seemed like where you guys go to, there's a lot of culture. 
the fa- the families themselves have been within the club also for quite some time. So these kids have, you know, well, the thing too, like, is he 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 brings his kid kids his guys over here. Yeah, and those families trust me to take care of them. So it, what's so cool is when I go over there. Yeah, you know, if they're, they're those families are trusting me to take care of his kids when when they come to America. You know, when I go over there, it's awesome. I can send you know Liam That's... Liam. Who'd you go with? Who was your Bailey's. Uh, Bailey's. Oh, Bailey's. I love yeah. Bailey's. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely awesome. Him and Miguel. That was great. Um, and then I beat you know, Miguel. I was gonna say, like, like, like for him, um, here was the trip. You know, we we got there, we uh we took a bus ride back, uh, like two and a half hours in the, the middle of um um the country. I, re- I remember um, that the second be- biggest because you were sitting there and I was <laughs> I was asking uh I think I was asking Caleb, I was like, so what are we going to do? Are we just going to go to the families? And he goes, I don't know. And then all of a sudden I hear you go, guys, wake up. We're going to do a practice. And I looked at my phone <laughs> and it was 10 o'clock, 1030. <laughs> and you go, we're going to get a quick practice. Oh, and 10, 10, 10, 10. It was, it was 10, you 10, got 10 like 30. 10, 30 American time. Yeah, no, right. No, no, it was 10, 30 <laughs> their time. And I, don't you go, th- I don't think your phone switched and, over. But and yeah. you go, you go, all right, we're going to get a practice in. And it was like pitch dark. And you hear everyone go, no. <laughs> Please, <laughs> that's awesome. We got we we so we we uh we did a couple practices. Yeah, and then and then uh actually actually we went and we stayed at a sports school. That's right. And, uh, the sports school was pretty cool, wasn't it, Liam? Yeah. Um. Very so we stayed at a sports school. Um. And and uh that was that was pretty fun. Um. The, uh. My guys brought um, um, what's that game? Spike ball. Spike ball. You guys brought you, yeah. you guys brought spike ball and we're playing spike ball and yeah. cards and all sorts G- of stuff. gambling with candy and everything and <laughs> that that probably shouldn't be said but I remember with we were, candy we come were, on we were there and we uh, like me Caleb and Brayton and, and Miguel well Miguel was out he yeah. was out he was he was done cash from the flight and stuff <laughs> yeah well he. <laughs> Um, but the rest of us couldn't fall asleep. Yeah. Not even Caleb. So, so excited. we're sitting there, and he, we're kind of like you could hear everybody whispering. Yeah, and it was just nobody could fall asleep. So <laughs> then eventually, they all came over and they had like a flashlight. Yeah, I turned on and we just sat there. We talked for like an hour. Scary stories holding the hands saying kumbaya. <laughs> no, and then, and then we all just kind of went to bed and then woke up like two hours later in order to eat. <laughs> So you guys, I mean, it's a full experience. I mean, these kids are, they're getting the realness of what, what goes on over there, but they're also kind of getting, then they get up, they get to go to the practices. And I noticed just watching some of the videos yeah. you guys put up, they focus a lot on tumbling like like uh, Stelt talks about. There's a sure, lot sure. of gymnastics. You know, few, like one thing that I I always do in my practice is I've, is I've brought back uh, tons of, um, I guess, different tech, different, exercises yeah. i guess that i've seen over there in the times that i've been over there and i bring them into my practices and and it makes our our kids become better athletes yeah. you know i'll have i'll have like um for how many years i've been in the game i'll have my even like second graders they can't do a front handspring or something sure. it's like you know i'm gonna make you you're gonna do it and <laughs> and even if you don't do it you know um like every like the guys that are getting it i said you know, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. You'll you get know, it. Oh, three weeks from now, all of a sudden, holy shit, you see some growth, and yep. then oh, before you know it, they got it, and then they're caught up. That's awesome. So I mean, it, it just builds better um, athleticism, I should say. There's so many different yeah. things that 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 work on the athleticism before they even uh, pick up technique, I guess. Well, and it, so it, you're you're you're. It seems like they're geared towards like muscle, you know, just muscle groups that you don't typically use that you really need to tap into to be able to be successful, especially at Greco. I mean, I, and I don't know Greco enough to be, you know, like just be judging, oh, you got to do this, you got to do this. But just watching it, it's like it's a whole different beast, man. You got to move a whole different way, you know. So the tumbling and the For gymnastics sure. and having the core and the muscle and the, you know, the twitch reactions and stuff like that, it's, it's, I, I can only imagine they found a way to be able to work all that stuff. And it's awesome that you guys are able to bring that back here too, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, 
lot of lot of a lot of tough things um to try to get through to our athletes on if they're you know it's crazy because if you're a natural on you like to be in a certain certain you know spot if you like to tie up then then if you like to tie up then let's learn some greco moves sure. because it's going to help your tie ups but yep. if you're a guy that likes space, likes space and things like that, mm-hmm. um, you know, a lot of my techniques that I do for Greco, uh, you know, they can, they can, they can be leg attacks. Sure. Um, but you know, a lot of my techniques that I'm teaching, um, I'm not going for the leg attack. I'm going for the body. Okay. Um, can I, can I do an overhook to a, to a shot or a snatch or you know i mean something yep. like that of course i can do all that but totally. i can't do that in greco obviously i'm not snatching the leg up but, yeah but you um, can use it to your advantage yeah you know when i teach greco during the um the winter time during the high school season yeah. um we 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 do a lot of um two on ones and underhooks and things like that and uh just movements and and stuff um so it's not just crackle you know it's not not uh, i'm not um working on upper body stuff it's things that they could still use in folk style sure sure well i you it, know I, liam liam you use a two-on-one yep. liam you probably use an underhook somewhere along the line i'm just saying you know you you've used these ones and i mean I'm dragging out of them. I'm ducking out of them. You know, I'm just uh, yeah. checking out different movements and figuring out different different techniques. I guess. Yeah, he likes that big boy underhook. I know he like definitely likes the big boy underhook. It's, it did it, it works to his advantage as far as how he wrestles and everything like that. But I believe I'm a firm believer that his hand fighting's the way that it is is as good as it is just because of Greco and the things that he's learned from Greco. I mean, obviously that he's learned it also from the other styles, but really had to emphasize on it especially if you want to be competitive with the other kids, you know, over, especially overseas. Now I know when he wrestled Greco, like he, he wasn't like sitting there stressing out over whatever. I got killed. It's not a Greco guy. I got killed. (laughs) You did just fine, little man. But that was the one and two. But we made it a clear understanding that he's still going to work Greco because it's only going to make your folk style and freestyle stronger. You're still going to work it. For sure. I mean, and, and like almost everything I do in Greco, I, it can translate on down and through. Yep. Um, but not everything I do in folk style can I can do in Greco. Yeah. Um, it's just oh, pretty much everything. I can't lock hands in every right. situation leading the free or the folk style. But yep. I mean, everything I do in, um, in, in Greco, I can do exactly in freestyle so you i can lock it and get, you have a facebook you know. page for this group for the estonia trip and, and i know you guys have been posting out about it yep. a little bit now are you still you still have some spots open yeah i do um you know i'm kind of gonna give it a couple more weeks i was gonna uh try i'd like to try to get it closed around new year's you know that's kind of my uh Makes then sense. you know get ahead of everything uh get order my tickets and start really planning and mm-hmm. um last year i let in um um someone um later um and i got him in um but it was it was it was late and uh and I, and I just a little bit more on the, oh crap, I got to add him and I got to add this and add that. But, yeah. uh, you know, um, we have made it all work and, and, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm there to help out anybody that needs to, um, you know, well, we appreciate that. That's definitely needed in this, in this wrestling community. So it's, it's appreciated. And, and folks go take a look at, look up Estonia wrestling tour. Um, you'll see Maj is the one that posts most of the time on it. And, and they're also going to be going this year. I know Liam went last year. We're going to wait till this year's done going into the next year. We're going to send him. Cause we, like I mentioned, we saw this, uh, trip for school that he may have where he could go to Ireland. So we, we're going to, we may look at that. We don't know. We'll see what's going on. Wait, Ma- maybe, maybe we'll send him to play some soccer or something. He doesn't know it, but <laughs> we, we don't even know if he's going to do it yet or not. We got to look into it. But with that being said, we're going to kind of expand his horizons a little bit more and kind of kind of go from there. And then maybe when he goes back with you, he can bring some Irish you, luck with him. You definitely got to let me know when they come down here. Though. Yes, yes. Maybe. Keep us posted. Yeah, for sure. So everybody, reach out to Maja Casey. What yeah. age? What age groups are you taking? What What kind of age? What's your limits? Uh, well, kind of. I'm not. Uh, what I'm looking typically looking for is like twelve. Yep, twelve to eighteen. You know, twelve through juniors. Um, yep. I mean, I, I'd take somebody younger, but 
probably not much younger. Um, Here's that 12, 12 was probably a good age. Liam, what do you think? 12 was a good age. Uh, the the too young is probably, uh, they can only handle uh, certain things that we do. Uh, yeah. You know, I think, I think our group was pretty good. I mean, I only went once, so I can't say that there were other groups. But just as a kid yourself, I mean, if you were a twelve-year-old, I mean, that's a little bit much to handle. Oh yeah, I mean, just yeah. So that's probably young enough. And and to your to your credit, though, too, I mean, you're trying to let these kids have an experience, though, too. I mean, it's it's, I think it'd be hard for a ten or twelve-year-old, not twelve, but ten, eleven, maybe getting up to twelve years old to be like comprehend that. And be able to True. not be I mean, scared or anything Liam like that. Liam was 14, and he's going to bring home some good memory. I mean, I oh, mean he's yeah. probably talking your guys' ear off about the trip, I, you know? The, <laughs> the one big thing I remember was, again, Miguel just passed out right away. We were at our, we were at our guest, uh, our family, uh, Maylie's house. Yep. And he, he goes, okay, go to sleep. Good night. <laughs> Miguel just bam <laughs> clocks out. Yeah, I couldn't fall asleep. Liam's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's about I didn't really I didn't really keep track of the time. So it's about six in the morning, and we had to get up at we had to be ready by noon. Yeah. So I wake Miguel up and I go, wake me up at noon. <laughs> Miguel didn't wake me up. Maylie's did. I got six hours of sleep, and then we went to a uh, a science museum. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. That's cool. See, and that's yeah, the thing yeah. is like these kids are getting a full experience. I mean, so if people listening, you're, they're not just sending them over there to go sweat in the gym the whole time. They're getting a full experience. They're going and checking out Estonia. They went, you guys went over to Finland, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yes. You know, the one thing that I do a little bit different than the first year I went with Jared Lewis is, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, I got like families that they go stay with and um yes so they get kind of a more of a, a feel for it's a different kind of trip it is um you know i would have to say my trip and and that trip two different trips because he's staying maybe all in hotels and um and all this place and this place so uh yeah. this is kind of more personal and uh they get a, they get a chance to go um see what it's like, eat the food, yeah. you know, he, he's seeing all sorts of different things. Yep. Um, and then when we go to the, even when we go to the sports school or staying with the team, um, uh, the team in glass. And so they, they get to, uh, geez, you guys have m- had movie night. You guys, yeah. you, you guys, uh, Oh, he went shopping. They're doing all sorts of things for, I, for weeks. I know that, a, you know, I mean, for days, I know that a bunch of those guys at the sports school, well, probably not a bunch, but, like two or three were living at that school too, like they oh, weren't wow. just yeah. so like because wow. I remember this because they. Well, it's different over there though too, you know. Because they, they went to um, they went to wake everybody up. Yeah. So there, are like three of them that were staying at the school. At the school. And they like bam, 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 open the door. <laughs> they threw their notebooks. It was a mess in there, <laughs> and they were like slapping them to get up. Yeah. And then they all ran out. They, didn't they were slap like, you. Geez. Well, no, because I was up with them. They should have slapped you. No, it'd have been fine. But so, like the again, like you're saying, Maji, you guys, you give give them a, an experience. Like this is a living experience. This is a, it's a life experience. But so, I'm, I actually, I want to get in contact. I'd like to send something out to Maylee's parents as well, just this year for doing something like that because it still man, it means a lot to him. Big memories. I mean, those guys barely had TV in the house. Well, they had a TV, but they didn't watch it. You know, they're like, we do other stuff. We have board games. We have this. Sauna. And a song that we're working on so that. Like, like uh, if I if I had to say what Liam can see, it's like everything here is more modern and, uh, and new. Sure. And everything over there, there's so much history and oh, so yeah. old, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, you had um, Old Town. Yeah, Old Town. Know. Yep. Yep. You had. Where, you where had did you guys of... go in Finland, though? Where was that? Oh. Uh, Helsinki. Helsinki. We went to Helsinki. Yep. No. I ice skated for the first time in Europe. That was hilarious. And that's the other thing, Maja, <laughs> is like the parents don't miss much. You guys are putting it live, you know, when the kids are doing something. Yeah, I, I tons try of to pictures. capture as much as I possibly can. Yeah. I didn't tell Maja I was going ice skating either, so he couldn't get that. It was it was because I 
Because we were walking and we walked past a bookstore and a chocolate store. And I saw a cool chocolate like fountain thing sure. that had the design Fondue, on it. yeah. Yeah, and, and then I saw it was dark chocolate and I left. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, um, uh. and then we walked past like it was this big thing that said Talon and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like. Talon. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, whoa, what's this? Yeah. And I saw it was ice skating. And I go, Miguel, we should go ice skating. I don't appreciate and, my ankles. Let's go ice skating. And, and Miguel, we, you know how big Miguel yeah, is. He's, he's a big guy. Yeah. And he goes, no, I'm not going ice skating. And I said, hey, I'll pay. He yeah. goes, okay, I'll go ice skating. Okay, all right, since you'll pay for it. So we went, and I know and I know, I called my mom, and I think I called you. Yeah, while well, you're ice skating. And then I called Maj, yeah. and he goes, "Why?" I think you asked me this. Why didn't you tell me? I could have I could have gotten over there. All the pictures he could have yeah, gotten, right. all that stuff. But it's it's still cool though because it, it, he got to do that there, you know. And so that we also got to find out that he really learned how to shop and look for <laughs> deals on tennis shoes. No, he I was yeah, he didn't buy anything at every store. I I don't think he bought. It. I didn't. One store. I think he didn't, he, he didn't and, spend money at every. I bought food. I know I bought a lot of food. <laughs> I know I bought a lot of food. I we have so that kid looked like Estonia threw up Logan, on him by the time he left. That's what he Logan, looked like. Logan Trinari and I we were in the market, and and I was sitting there and I was like, Logan, watch this. And you know how like little kids like glide on the shopping carts. Yeah, we were like right next to the meat section. There was an open spot, and I just started <laughs> gliding through the through the store. That oh, was funny. Yeah, no, it was, it's a good time. So, folks, I mean, get a hold of Maja in, in the Estonia Wrestling Tour because it's it's an experience that your kids won't forget. It doesn't matter 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 18. I don't care how old they are. Send them along. They're going to have a great – I mean, there was a kid that went along that was injured. He still had a blast. I mean, even though it was a bummer for him, you know, he, he had to kind of hobble Caleb. around. He plans on going back this year. Does he? He plans on going back this good. year, Cody Kwok. Good, oh, Cody yeah, Kwok. Cody. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Kwok. Good, good for him. Because I, I guarantee you, that kid would have done awesome. Oh, um, he would have done awesome. Okay, uh, so you you do victory wrestling as well. Mm-hmm. Did you? Oh, I did got you, another question. About did you that. create victory by yourself? Like, was this before all all the Estonia stuff? You no. were like, hey, I want to create this. Or victory was, it? was there. So, Actually, uh, no, Kevin, Kevin Black has had victory for long, long time. Yeah. Um, I actually, uh, had, a, um, a club earlier in the early years revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. and then I actually, um, um, went and Kevin was asking me for years to come over to victory. And, uh, I guess it was kind of time to time, time to go over to victory. And so, yeah. uh, I've been over at Victory the last couple of years, so um, having fun. Yeah. Well, it sounds like they let it's you do your mean. thing. You're doing Greco, man. You're doing what you I think we talked yeah, about. Yeah, you know, I'm having fun. Uh, I'm having fun doing that. You know, yeah. I, not that yeah. I don't give back on any other style because oh, I right. do help out with, um, you know, some of the freestyle and some of the um, some of the girls um, as well. Awesome. Um, I mean, I'm I'm all I do. I help out in help. multiple areas. You're everywhere. You're, you're, you're everywhere. You're Maja, dude. You're Maja. There's no one. There's no one that's like Maja. There's like there's so like a you in every spot. It's right? like a mirage. Of <laughs> just like, Maja. He's here, and then he's here, and then he's here, and then he's here. It's like you're everywhere. But it's awesome. I I yeah. love I love running into you every single time. Like I, I even I'll turn around randomly and just look at you and be like, you have so much damn energy, dude. Like. So much in it, and I don't. It's, a, it's ADHD or something like that. I feel you, brother, because <laughs> man, I don't have as much as you do, but I have some, and you, you can tell where he got most of his from was from me, because his mom, she could sleep and take a nap any time of the day of the week. I can't. And oh, yeah, but that's after work. It's after I've been working. Now if this kid comes home, he puts his head in the pillow, he passes out, but as soon as he wakes up, bam, gone. Takes him twenty minutes to wake up, and he's going. You know, so it's one of those things where we appreciate that type of energy. It's awesome. We want everybody to check you guys out. Check out Victory. Hey, I got a question for you. There's more than just Victory School of Wrestling. What's going on over there? What's this nutrition and health? Whoa. I didn't hear this. uh, Victory has so much going on over there. Yeah. Um, You know, uh Come check it out. I, I can't. Yeah. If, if there's leaving us. There's multiple. 
<laughs> you know, there's there's a weight room. There's a couple locker rooms, a couple saunas. I mean, there's wow. there, there is uh, uh, a trainer upstairs. Yes. Uh, there's um. Are they are they like man, the, there's the recovery? There's the recovery yeah. room. There's so many different. There's so many different things. Um, Victory's a uh, awesome place. Um, come check it out. And uh, Liam, yeah, you, you're gonna have to come up. Um, I have when, to. Uh, Estonians oh. come gotta, over. And, uh, he's getting older. I gotta right? wrestle Artur again. Oh boy! I gotta wrestle all of them. Heck yeah, you gotta wrestle Artur <laughs> again. Um, you know, I had Miguel over. Or, um, he's been up and, and trained there. Um, Does he? Um, Cole Spear has uh, come up and trained nice. there. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I got. Uh, we'll have to send you. We got the, so the, send you over there this summer. The sauna are they like the ones in Estonia or are they more high tech? Like infrared. Yeah, are they more? You guys have the stone, um, the, the old school stone. Pour the water on them, or you got infrared. There, there's both actually. There's uh, trainers got an infrared upstairs, um, so there's actually um, all sorts of different ones. That's Do you? Nice. It, no, I have a question for you because I'm actually looking into those infrared ones. I know that some people would rather have the stones, but do you think that it has kind of the same? Does it do the same for you, the infrared versus the stone? Because I'm thinking about putting one in the backyard here. Um, you know, uh, Liam, did you get a chance to get hit by the uh, branches? Yeah, I did. Okay, like uh, so that was uh, like a custom, a custom uh, over there. There's nettles. Um, they they hit them with uh, all sorts of different the branches um, of yeah. different things. Um, well, they didn't leave scars. So, so when you're hard over enough. in in Estonia yep. or Finland, you know they'll they'll pat you down with the they'll hit you with the the branches and it will open up your pores. I forgot. And, did they put it in yeah. cold tons water? Of did, did they, they put, put it in cold water? The branches? Uh, I don't. I don't, I don't. I'm unsure. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think like it's super cold. Maybe I don't. I'm not sure. Hey, you know what? The other thing you could do for me is get a hold of Christian, and I want to get him on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think. I think oh, we need to, that'll be cool. I think he. Yeah, I, I think, think we need to pull. Like it. We need to pull you know, it off. He, uh, we're kind of we're we're kind of looking to uh, expand um, some different things too. Uh, I'd like to try to take a Greece trip and uh, an an Israel trip. Uh, really? So there's like uh, there's a lot of um, who knows who knows what's ahead. Um, but there's uh we've been talking all sorts of stuff. I I mean Romania. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> she's good. She's good. She's um, swinging down for the, for the little holiday visit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like actually Georgia and um, Azerbaijan are some more um, Ooh, yeah. ones that we've we've kind of discussed. Um, you know Sweden in there too. Uh, That's a that, I I Azerbaijan. So Christina and I had come to the conclusion that the next one he goes on, we're going with. Now, we told you about that, but we're not we're not necessarily following you guys around. We want to go to the competition, but we want to actually go on vacation ourselves. <laughs> but he'll... No, and, and, and you'd like it, because this last year I uh, had a couple um, couple parents that uh, did their own thing as well, um, and they were there for the competition, which, which was kind of cool, because, like, I mean, the – their kids were with me the whole time and got that experience. Yeah. But when they were at the the event, you know, whole, mom and dad were actually there. That's so cool. That was kind of like, uh, kind of cool for the, the kids probably. Yeah. That's a, we're, and we're definitely going to pull that off. And that's kind of another reason why we're kind of waiting like another year or so just to kind of maybe put some more money aside so that way we can get over there. But I think, I think if I ask Liam, um, Everybody, everybody should experience old town, old town talent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We will. We will. And cause she's a history major. So that's a big thing. Knowing, being able to go to a place like that, that has Ooh, all, love all that She'd history love it. is going to be fantastic. And I get into it too, because you're there and the thing that they're talking about and it's all it's old, like the old stuff is the best stuff. Just old not. town is, I mean, it's big. It's actually, it's actually big. It's, you can walk around for okay, my legs are miles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now it sounds like because you guys are making it sound like that it's it's still fairly. I mean, obviously it's old town, but they've advanced it a little bit technologically wise. I mean, you can still buy with a credit, you know, credit cards. It's not like you got to go over there with wooden tokens. Well, they're, or anything. All their all their yeah, you know, um, so like old town, there's like the the regular city of Tallinn, and then there's old town Tallinn, um, which is uh kind of got a it's got the um the castle room or walls around it. 
So it's like a, it's like a mid it's like it's a, like a medieval town inside yeah. the town of Tallinn itself. Well, um, oh. and and yeah, there's there's all sorts of high tech. Yeah, there's Gucci blah blah. There's all yeah. sorts of different uh, we, stores in in Old Town. Right. We the bathrooms. Go ahead, go ahead Liam. To the, say something. The, <laughs> The bathrooms have like pins, so you have to like go up to the lady and ask for the code to get into the bathroom. Oh well, it's because they don't want people going in there and doing weird stuff. Who knows what's going on? You, we, hey, they got key. You got to have a key in some of them around here because they can't trust people in bathrooms. So it's yeah. not. They just have codes. Yeah, That's actually right. higher tech than here. Do they? They now there they don't have where you can where you have to pay to use like a porta potty. Do they? Where you're like outside. You had to pay to use no the bathroom. Potties. No. I heard you had to do that. No porta potties. Well, not the porta potties, but like Maley said that. In one of the grocery stores, you have to pay to use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, they gotta clean it. You know, it's part of the. And, part of and the I have to say, like uh, after COVID, create so many different things probably have changed too. Yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. So people get to Estonia Wrestling Tour. Get in contact with Maja. Let them know your intentions, you know, tell them who you are and make sure that you get your kid a great experience because honestly to me, and that's only because I sent Liam on it, but I know of the other ones. I know who else goes and I wouldn't send them with anybody else but you guys just because of the experience, the, the personalized experience. You, it almost is, so you tried to match them up with guys that you thought they would get along with, number one, the American guys. But then you also put thought into what the people they get along with over there. You know, the he's probably going to wrestle with this kid, and he's they're about the same size, but they have you know their personalities are kind of the same. So you weren't just like here's a house and throwing them in there. You guys try to make sure that these kids are happy, and especially the the other families too. Because I mean, these kids are going to be staying in their homes. You know, like you know, and I've I've hosted uh, a lot of them them kids that come over here. So yeah, I kind of um, you knew them. I know their level and uh, kind of you know. I, Man, that's the best way to do it is yeah. try to set them up um, and have an uh, awesome time yeah. with whoever they're going to partner up with for a couple of days because it's only going to – it's not like I don't see him every day. Like yeah. I'll see Liam every day, but he's not going to – I'm not going to be with him all – I'm only going to see him for on Saturday and Sunday, mm-hmm. you know, two hours this day and two hours this day. Yeah. Other than that, it's, he's going to spend in that, that those days with the family. Well, you're building when, relationships, not your pocketbook. That's when the they, most important part. When they come down, if they ever need a place, we are always welcome right here. We got we got space. Oh, you want Maley's? You want Maley's I'll take them. Here. I'll take them all. Bring him Ma- here. Maley's has been here twice, so he if he comes back, it'll be his third time in Wisconsin. Well, right. we'll bring and, and we'll bring him here. If you want him to stay here, he can stay here. We'll make sure he gets over by either way, man. Because that it's the only thing I could think of doing besides sending him a gift. I I would definitely bring those guys here and definitely have them here because they treated him really well. I mean, they had fun. He showed him, and these guys did really well too, as far as kind of going along with. Okay, let's play board games. Let's do this. This is what you guys you know- do. Are you are you hooked up with them, Liam? Um, I have different. Uh, I have Maley's. I haven't talked to him in a while, but I have him. Yeah, you better talk to him. <laughs> I can't talk to you him. You know, he that's one respond. thing. That's one thing that my kids we've uh, um, the, we've we talked. Uh, I talked to Christian. You know, yeah. If not every couple weeks, a couple times a month um, since 2017. Yeah, and. Uh, so I mean I talk to him nonstop, so we're always talking. Um yep. and uh, you know, I'll I'll send some of the kids uh um highs and different things. You know, my kids uh still have big bonds with uh That's them awesome. kids coming and spending spending time in our house and then post them over there too. So That's awesome. Yeah. I got my son's gonna go to school over there that's so, what i um, so that's interesting well and we'll talk about that more too because i know liam has been talking about that as far as after talking to um K- uh, brayton right yeah yeah after talking to brayton a little bit about it and he's like you know it's kind of interesting i thought about doing it. i was like i don't know anything about school over in europe bro so you're gonna have to do some research on it but we'll definitely talk about that because i i it's nothing we want to say no to you know we don't want to tell him no it's not definitely that see, if it's something that's in his interest and it Fits the bill with what he's trying to accomplish and things like I don't I don't have a problem sending him overseas for college by all means, so we're gonna want to talk you know, to you. Yeah, there's some uh, some cool things uh, you know that um, even if you're interested, 
freaking yep. let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And tell Chris John next time you talk to him. I'm only so I just you know I started a fa- I had to start a personal Facebook page. And I, I had to get off of Facebook for a while before because I just got tired of the garbage that was on it. So I'm I'm back on Facebook and I'll find him. And it's not it's, I'm not going to say what the name is on here because I don't want people finding me left and right. <laughs> I'll well, talk to you when we're you done. Now that you said it, they're still going to try to find That's, it. They can try to find it. I'll, 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 I'll afford them that challenge, but I'm not going to give them the answer. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, but I want to get back in touch because I was friends with him and kind of because Liam had. Kind of a, a little bit of a of a go around relationship with the little guy, little Chris. Oh yeah, little press. Yeah, you know he'd always say ah. we'd be playing like Uno or something. He goes, "Shut up, <laughs> shut up." When, when you when you uh, wrestled were though? practicing the, the the day of weigh ins, that was awesome, wasn't it? That was yeah. so cool. Rolling was, around with him, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. That was that was fun watching it. Let him kind of throw you one time, and then you got on him a little bit. I didn't but, let him. He, he threw me. Guys, Did it? We, we, <laughs> we had like a, a match, didn't we? Yeah, he's got some muscle. <laughs> well, they work differently than we yeah. do, so hopefully he was able to toss you around a little bit. But get in touch with Chris John. I'll tell him, I'll tell him that I'll reach out to him on Facebook. Uh, is he on Instagram? Because I obviously the posts on Instagram. I, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I, I would think so, man. I'm, That's I'm, my... I, I'd have to look into it. I haven't been on on yeah. any social media very much <laughs> lately. Yeah. I kind of like step back a little bit. But, uh, uh, I feel you, brother. I feel you. Cause I was just, I was done with it. And then I was like, you know, I want to do this podcast thing again. So I got to kind of have something on Facebook. So, but tell him, let him know. I want to get him on air here. I want to get him on a show and have him talking about, you know, his club and his tournament too. I mean, Hey, if we can make it international baby, I already got listeners in Germany. Just figuring that out the other day. I have 33% of my listeners are in Germany. Got to get Messi on here. He has dude. nothing to do with Germany. That's I know, Argentina. but you said international. <laughs> you said international. I got to get him on here. He's such a weirdo. But Maja Casey, we're going we're gonna to let you go here. We got about an hour and 10 minutes in. Um, we're going to bring you back on more when it comes to trip time again here with um, – you know, coming up closer. I'm talking this year yet. So once it gets closer to trip time, we can start talking about, you know, kids you got along and, and the plans. And yeah, pff, sometimes things happen. Maybe you can't make a trip. You know, sometimes there's not enough interest because you try to keep it the way you keep it. You're not, you're not strained from anything, which is another thing I can appreciate. So we're going to come back. We're going to bring you back around the time it's trip time. So you be ready. Um, and I'm going to get your phone number too. I don't want to just have to message you through, through Facebook. So that way I can get in touch with you. Well, I'm gonna lead us out. Hey, sounds good, buddy. I'm gonna lead us out with our music here a little bit, and then uh, I was I'm glad Liam got on a little bit more because I know he's he's a little reserved when he talks, Woo! but he's definitely a Maja Casey. Brad fan. and Liam, awesome for having me, guys. Thanks. I loved every minute of it. I'm glad we got an hour and ten minutes out of you because I thought maybe it'd be a little shorter, but man, I could talk to you for I'm hours. I'm glad we did it. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Well, you have a good night, sir. You relax. You have a good hey. Merry Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas, guys whole crook family have a merry christmas all right appreciate it man well you have a good rest of your night we'll let you go bud all right guys thanks for having me you bet merry christmas merry christmas well there you go mr maja casey yeah that's that guy's got so much energy now this time i'm actually recording the aftermath here i love it so i think i think it's good i think i hopefully the next go around you wind up going not just Estonia. Hopefully, he picks a different one and send you to a different one. I think if they... Uzbekistan would be cool. I, you know. Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan would be cool. Um, Speaking with the whole, if they come here, yeah. imagine how cool... Imagine how much Coach Maracek would be, like, soaking all the, <laughs> like... He like doesn't care about the international and, styles. I know, but just, like, bringing those guys in. Yeah. Is that your foot? Yeah, that's my foot. Oh, I'm trying to turn it here, and it's not. Oh, turning, this is like downhill. You feel me? Sometimes I'll be sitting here, and I'll just kind of like start sliding, <laughs> and it's so annoying. I'm stuck on the weight set. Yeah, but that's just because it's pitched, so that way we don't drown down here. Yeah, that's true. But well, uh, we're gonna actually let everybody go now. Uh, it's the end of our, uh, our our recording weekend. I had what I had Noah Hardy on earlier. I had um, who did I just have on that I talked RQ. to? I had RQ and yeah. the WI Wrestle Boys, and we had Majan. And then I got what next week I got this coming Monday we got Chris Gendry. I mean we got a bunch lined up so we got we got to get going we got to get some sleep so uh, thanks everybody for tuning in.
All of our episodes are brought to you by Appleton Tattoo, located at 117 South Appleton Street in Appleton, Wisconsin, right off the main drag on College Avenue. You can't miss them. I've had some work done. Uh, I have a Celtic cross that covers my back that was done by Jason. We're not done yet. Uh, Jason Winans and crew, uh, the artists that he have there, those guys are the best in the Fox Valley. Um, they are definitely one to go to. If it's something that you've just been kind of throwing around, they'll make you feel comfortable. It's a very clean environment, very nice crew, um, and very willing to get done whatever you need done when you need it done. Um, you can message them on Facebook. I know they're on Facebook. You can give them a call uh, at 920-604-8289 and get in touch with Jason Winans and crew at Appleton Tattoo, located again in Appleton, Wisconsin at 117 South Appleton Street, right in Appleton. Very flexible hours, great crew, clean environment again. Uh, I would not send you anywhere else except for these guys. Appleton Tattoo.